Okay. Um, well, good morning. Welcome to Fridays with Fiscal. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about receipts and refunds. Um, so, oh, just a second. <laughs> um before we get started i just want to let everyone know um i definitely have the chat up so if you have questions um please let me know there or feel free to chime in um we're just going to kind of be talking through these different transaction types today and i have a couple um different ways that i want to kind of show the impacts of those transaction types um and then we are recording this so it will be um, available on the training page um if you need to go back later and look at any parts so um, let's see. Okay. So to start off, so I just want to go to um, the wiki pages as we uh, usually kind of start off here because I'm going to go through um, the different um, transaction types and we're going to kind of talk through them. But as far as like the general uh, process of like, like we'll look at creating one, but if you need to refer back, all of that stuff is kind of spelled out in the wiki. So um, where we're looking is under the transaction menu. And first we're gonna be here with receipts and then we are going to be here with refunds. So let's go to receipts first. Okay. So um, just to get started with talking about receipts, now there is um, some more information here that kind of gives a recap of, of what these kind of transactions do. But really what you're doing is you're bringing money into the system. So you're receiving it. Um, now there are two different kind of um, uh, like signifiers you can use when you're posting a receipt and we'll we'll see how those um, actually come about practically when you're entering. Um, but we're going to talk about the RC for receipt and RX for reduction of expenditure. So um, we're going to take a look at what the difference is between each type and what those do. Um, essentially, so uh, for your receipt, um, the main points that I have that we want to focus on are when you're using the RC for receipt, this is going to be making an impact to a revenue account. And so that's going to be uh, specifically to the revenue account. And then um, generally that would be for adding money. So my examples of this is that it would be like, say the district is receiving money from a grant, they're going to receipt that into their system using a receipt. Um, if they're getting fees paid from a parent, um, you know, for a certain uh, class or activity, they would receipt that money into the system um, this way. Um, and then another note that I had is that um, for uh, districts or entities that are using the AR module, they do have an option right within the AR module to also make a receipt for the payments that they get in. And then um, for the reduction of expenditures, oops, sorry, I'm just trying to move my notes around here so I don't have to swing my head every time I'm just trying to double check. Um, okay, so um, for the reduction of expenditure, now this, it has a similar impact and we're gonna look at how these transactions actually impact like the overall fund balance. Um, but uh, this impacts an expenditure account. So it's actually impacting a budget account when you're entering one of these transactions. And so an example of this is, some, so it's it's still bringing, essentially bringing money in, it's increasing the fund balance. Um, but for something like this, so here's my example, is um, they have a teacher and they have their certain expenditure accounts that are budgeted for what they're allowed to spend for the year. And they purchase some textbooks. So they spend $1,000 of their budget on textbooks. Well, then the textbook company says, hey, actually, these were only $800. I'm going to give you some of your money back. I'm going to refund you $200 for this. And so if, um, if that happens, they get that money. The district gets that money back from the textbook company. And so instead of using just a regular receipt where it would just be received in and like increase their their cash balance, 
they could use this reduction of expenditure so it would reduce what was spent from that budget account and ultimately what that would do is it would free up the budget again so now the teacher has their $200 back in their budget that they can spend on something else so um, this can be really helpful for the district um, but certainly with these two different kinds that impact completely different accounts like these transactions can be something that are confusing um, in certain you know at, at certain points so that's why I think that this is a really interesting one for us to talk about today because certainly when there are more intricate questions that end up with us it's it really um, is a matter of kind of just analyzing like what is this transaction doing and how is it impacting the totals? So, um, okay, so that's my little spiel, just about some examples of like what, what these are actually doing that we're looking at. Um, let's go to the software and where I'm at, let me make sure I have this, there we go. Where I'm at here is transaction and receipts. Okay. Um, and so once we're in here, so here's our receipts grid. We can see our receipt numbers, um, dates received from. And I'm just going to kind of talk through creating one of these. Um, so if we come in here, and I'm going to uncheck this because um, we don't need it to close. When we save it, we want to look at it still. Um, the receipt number, I'm not going to enter that in. I'm going to let that automatically um, populate, but certainly I could. Um, we have the date field. And so this, you know, it's going to, um, it, obviously the date, it does need to be in an open period. But really, when I um, choose this date, like the impact it's going to have on my system is that whatever period this date is in is when it's going to impact my um, it's going to increase the fund balance essentially. So I'm adding a receipt, I'm adding money to the system that's going to happen within the month of whatever date I've chosen. Received from, so this might be, so let's do, um, let's do, I guess we can do, I'm getting ahead of myself because I was thinking, let's do our textbook example, but let's first just do a regular receipt. So let's do received from, Let's do like a fee. Um, fees paid. And these fields are optional, but these do help. We can see on the grid that they show up there. Uh, total items and created date will automatically populate. Let's say. Um, so let's receive in some fees for, for football. And let's make it $100. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose an account here, which usually, okay. So you know what? Uh, do I have any fees? No. Okay, well, then we're just going to go ahead and choose a random one. So I, I figured I have a way that we're going to talk about the general um, impact of the fund balance. And then I was like, maybe we should look at accounts. But um, I had that thought this morning. So I haven't picked out specific accounts. So um, we'll kind of uh, keep track of those on the fly here. So. Okay. Um, so we're because we're choosing the RC here, this is what is specifically going to make sure going to designate this as um, a receipt type of um, item, which means that this is going to impact a revenue account. And so when I was selecting my account here, you'll notice that these are all revenue accounts that I have available for that type. So let me save this up. And um, so the other thing that I have pulled up here, so I have my tabs where we were looking at the wiki. This is our software. I just made this little visual that we're going to kind of use throughout the day. And I just sometimes with wrapping my head around these and like how the different transactions are impacting, like what kind of impact they're actually making to the accounts. I wanted to have this visual of like, this is what it looks like to the cash balance. So the cash balance, the overall calculation, like when they get that cash summary, the cash balance is going to be the initial cash. 
it's going to subtract the expended amount because I'm, I spent that money, right? I, I paid for things. I, I purchased things. I spent that. So what I initially had in my bank minus what I've spent plus what I've received in, and then that's going to be my remaining balance. So when we're doing this, so here, let's just look at my little spreadsheet here as far as like how this calculates. So um, I kind of have it just going line by line. So say I spent $500 and I received $200. So you can kind of see this updating here. So now of the thousand, I spent 500, but I received 200, so I'm at 700. So um, this transaction that we just entered, we entered a receipt for $100 for those fees. So in this column, because we picked a revenue account, that's a receipt, I'm going to add $100 to my bank. So that's what that looks like. Now let's do, um, let's do a new one here. And um, so this is going to be from, let's do the textbook example. So let's say our textbooks were overpaid and we got $200 back um, to this account. So um, I'm gonna do an RX for reduction of expenditure. Let's put in our $200. And this is where um, I probably should have picked an account so we could go kind of look at, at how it frees up the budget. So let me just, let's just pick a random one here. And I'm so sorry, my Zoom, my little Zoom pop-ups getting in the way here. Okay. So I'm going to the accounts. We're using an expenditure account for this. Okay. So, and I, I, you know, we're just going to pick like kind of the first one here to make it easy for us to find, although I recognize that this is, you know, not the type of account that we would usually use, but let's do this. So let's go, um, we're going to go back a step. I'm so sorry, but I think that this will actually be better if we kind of look at the full scope of something like this and how it impacts the account because that's really the benefit of these transactions and again I apologize for not saying this up in advance but but we can do this on the fly now I think it's I think it's good to talk about so um let's start off here by giving our account um um a budget so I'm going to give it an initial budget of one thousand dollars oh and I shouldn't have done it this way okay hang on hang on So we're just going to do it as an adjustment. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. So we'll do it as an adjustment so that we can do it in this month. Ultimately, it's still giving us, um, it's still going to give us an amount for um, our expendable. So this is what we have available to spend. Um, and uh, right now, so look at they have nothing actually expended, nothing encumbered. Um, so this makes their remaining balance one thousand. So if I, so I'm the teacher, I'm coming in here. I see I have a thousand dollars to spend. That's my money to spend for the year, and I know I need textbooks. So what I would do is I would go um, create my purchase order, and. Um, Hang on a second. What we do is we write our account down so that we make sure that we can easily find that. And I believe we just picked this first one here. We did. Okay. 
So now, you know, and they probably have, if they have like their requisition process or that sort of thing, um, you know, obviously a teacher wouldn't be going to actually make the entire expenditure. But ultimately what would happen is, you know, they would go through whatever process they have as far as um, submitting those textbooks. So say, so say they enter a requisition, they submit that um, for approval, and then the accounts payable person at the district comes in here and um, they would convert that to a purchase order. Here's their budget and um, I'm a little zoomed in so we don't see that that has a thousand available, but it does. So we're gonna save that and then, oops. We're going to come in here and what we want to do next is invoice it. Okay, so I'm just, you know, I know that, oops, I know that I'm not, um, I know I'm a little off the rails from a receipt here, but basically I'm just going through and posting this from purchase order, we're going to post it all the way through a check so that we can have an expense when we do that reduction of expenditure um, against that same account. Okay. So we posted our expenditure. Let me go back. Let's just pull up this account now in this window. All right, so here's what we're looking at. So our expendable, this was our adjustment, was 1,000. We spent 1,000. We per, we spent our entire budget and we have nothing remaining um, as a teacher to purchase anything else this year because we've spent everything. So I'm gonna rewind. Um, I'm going back to, this is back to our receipt transaction and we picked a reduction of expenditure. So now um, I've spent the thousand dollars, but the district gets 200 back of that. They said these textbooks were actually on sale. And, um, you know, just kidding, I'm actually going to go ahead and give you this $200 back. So I'm going to do that as an RX entry. And I'm going to go look up our account that we used for that. Okay, boom, here we go. And then let's save this up. And now we have our reduction of expenditure. And when I go back here and refresh this page, and let's look at our account now. So here's what we have. So our, um, our adjustment, or so our available um, expendable amount started out as 1,000. Now our actual expended has changed to 800 because we reduced the expenditure on this. So that leaves our unencumbered balance and our remaining balance at 200. And what that ultimately means is that whoever's budget this is, this teacher now has $200 more to spend. If we entered this as a receipt, it would have had the same impact on the books, but not on this account. So this can be very helpful um, in the situation where they need to use these reduction of expenditures. Um, so I know we kind of went around about that um, to show, uh, to get this actual picture of it, but I just kind of wanted to give like more context of like why they might use this um, and why it's important. Um, when you see these Rx versus just Rc. Okay, other thing I want to do with this reduction of expenditure is let's look at this now. So this is our receipt. When we had that $100, we received it. Now, the interesting part, though, is the reduction of expenditure hit an expenditure account. So it's going to be in this column. But reducing the expenditure 
means I'm lowering the expenditure. So my $200 looks like this on here, but it does the same thing. So the hundred, it, I had $700, it added to the fund balance. This negative 200, because it's, it's saying I spent less by 200. So it's kind of like a double negative because this column gets subtracted. So this 200 is also being added to the fund balance. And I know that's like a little bit of the confusing part with this when you're trying to think through some more of the complex transaction. So I kind of wanted to show that. So ultimately, whether they use an RC or an RX on that receipt type, it is, it would still have the same impact on the overall fund balance. It just looks different because it hits two different kinds of accounts. Any questions on that? Um, a couple other things here. So let me just um, here. Let's let's clone this one real quick. I also just kind of wanted to talk about the basics with like adding a line item. So um, obviously, I added this one down here with the plus. Um, I do have a plus within the grid if I needed to like insert an item. If I wanted to copy this item, um, I can use this little icon to just copy and add another line um, with the same information. I can remove an item, delete that, um, and then I can move them around. So um, that functionality is available um, within um, the, the items of the receipt. Okay, and then um, let's see. So if I go to edit this, um, if you go to edit a receipt transaction, it does have to be in an open period. and um, so if you try and edit one of these and you try and change something and it's not in an open period when you save it, you will get an error. So um, that is something to note. Okay, so then we are to the part where you can reverse the receipt. So I'm gonna look at a different one for this. Let's look at one that is in a prior period here. So. Here is, um, let's see, let me try and grab one that I didn't already reverse. So uh, let's do this 500 right here. Let's look at this. Okay, so this one is a receipt that we got for breakfast. So this was receiving in like people paid for breakfast and we're receiving that money. So if I look at this, this was $500. Let's go to our little sheet. So this one had received $500 that added $500 to our fund balance or like our overall cash balance. But now what, what we need to do is, so say we need to reverse this. So either we need, you know, I mean, they might do this because they need to correct it or like that money had to be given back or something like that. Like they need to undo this transaction is when you're going to use the reverse. Um, so the reverse option is right up here. And when I click to reverse, so you'll notice that this was in October. October is a closed period at this point. We are in December. Um, in my instance, October is closed. And so um, what this allows you to do is it allows you to create the reverse receipt with a date in, in an open period. So we're going to leave this date as December. And that allows the books to account for, you know, when this change to the balance is happening. So um, let's go ahead and reverse it as of December. Sounds good. That's exactly what we want to do. And here's what it does. It creates the receipt. So it has the um, December 9th date on it. It adds this description so that you can see exactly what, re what receipt is being reversed. And then look at what it does down here. So on these items, it is putting a negative of the amount to the same exact account. And um, if I close these up here, you can see on your on my grid, here is um, that receipt 
And so it basically makes like another receipt trans transaction automatically for you to cancel out what the original um, receipt was. And so when we go to our little balancing sheet, what this looks like, it's a negative 500. And you'll see that brings our balance back down by 500. So it undoes this original receipt. Um, okay. Okay. So the other thing um, that I want to just mention while we're looking at this grid is this import option. Um, and so the import option, it looks the same, like as, you know, some of our other transaction grids that have this, like the purchase order import um, or invoice import where you would um, make a CSV file and you could load it in here to create receipts. Um, we do have this in the documentation. Um, here is kind of the overview, but down here we have a template. And um, you can just download the template here. And um, then we have the grid that shows, um, this is going to show all of the different um, fields that can be included and then the fields that are required to be included. So let's look at this real quick. Um, it's kind of debating on showing this for time reasons, but I think we can make a quick one here. Let me open my Excel. So this, this uh, template is, very simple. I'm trying to zoom in for you here. So let's go look at this. Um, so we have line number is a required field, type is a required field. And now the type, that's going to be important because as we saw, you know, this really um, impacts the um, like kind of account and how this actually posts. So let's go in here. Let's do line number one. Let's do an RC type. Amount, let's just make this $10. Now here's the thing, full account code. So when you look at this, it says full account code. We do have to format it with the hyphens. Okay, cool. But required fields, if you're not using an XREF code, the type of account used must match the item type. If you put in RC, you have to put in a revenue account here. If you put in RX, you have to put in an expenditure account here. So this is where, you know, us kind of talking through these different kinds, you know, this kind of comes back to us here where we need to make sure that um, if you are importing that um, you're aware of this. So let me just pull, I'm just going to go pull one of these. Okay, it doesn't like me pasting like that. Okay, well, we'll this will work. I know it doesn't look great, but okay, let's go back and look at our other fields. So received from and the description, these are the ones that we saw in the header, not required. And then an XREF code, if they use like an XREF code to refer to a certain account code, then um, they do have the option to use that. Okay. So this looks like we have all of the requireds here. So let me go ahead and um, I'm just gonna save this. Mm -mm. Okay, sorry, I just have so many downloads. I'm trying to make sure I get on my desktop so it's easy for us to find. <laughs> okay, all right, so let's go back here. So let's do an import and then I'm gonna choose the file and um, let's see. Okay, here we go. 
Okay, so receipt fields test. So this is um, what we were just looking at here. And um, I'm just gonna go ahead and click load and it's pulling up. So it's always going to make, the imports are always going to make this little output file. What, like if there is an error or if there's not, that's kind of like your confirmation file either way. But we can see on the window here, records loaded equals one with zero errors. We just had that one line, so that's good news. And um, if I close out of this, boom, there it is. And we can see that that imported there. So obviously our test was with one record, you know, that it was just as easy, easy to enter. But if they do have a group of um, receipts that they need to import where it's got a lot of line items or it's a lot of different receipts, like this can be very, very helpful to import um, from a spreadsheet because say they do, like say they have fees from parents and they have, you know, hundreds of fees that they want to enter in and they want to have those accounted for linked with like the parent's name or, or some, you know, or the, the child's like ID number or whatever. Um, so if they have larger transactions, this can be a very, very helpful tool. All right. Okay, so that said, so we've looked at the import option. We've looked at kind of the basics of receipts. Um, I promise we will also be talking about refunds. I know we're about halfway halfway there on this training, but but we're doing good. So one thing that I want to kind of sidetrack and talk about a little bit with receipts is a question. So this one is a question I've had come up a couple times and I want to kind of talk through it because um, now with the receipts, like we've looked at entering positive amounts. We saw this reversal of receipt where you could have, you can enter a negative amount with it. And um, so basically the question that we've gotten is like, if you're trying to make an adjustment where you're trying to increase one account and decrease another account, like putting a positive negative and using a receipt for that. Um, now we do have um, in the transactions, we have this distributions error correction page. And I want to bring this up because what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of compare and contrast um, using this page versus using a receipt. And um, so basically, if we look at one of these, what this is for is I can go ahead and add, um, I can add my lines here and um, in here. So I do have the ability to select both uh, revenue and expenditure accounts on my um, distribution error correction. And that's why sometimes this gets um, like kind of it becomes a question of like, which one do I use? Because both the receipt because the receipt transaction, you can do um, an RC or an RX and use either account code type. So um, when I'm doing this distribution error correction here, this is a requirement is you have to come in here and this has to equal zero. And so basically what I'm doing, so in this case, I'm using expenditure accounts. So I'm correcting the, exp I'm moving an expense from one account to the other. So I'm reducing the expense on this account and I'm adding an expense to this account. And so let me just save this up, see this equals zero, um, and but it says total distributed. So it's saying, okay, you moved this $10 from here to here. Um, this is the total amount that you like redistributed with this transaction. And so um, let's go back to our receipts now. Um, so I've basically had this um, come up. So this is like just um, what I want to highlight the difference of is so those were expenditures. So let's say and uh, I'm not sure that I'm picking the exact same accounts, but Okay, 
So now I'm in a receipt and we can see that I can do this like very similar transaction using the Rx type on a receipt. And so if I save this up, then there we go. So this, this essentially does like the same thing. So, um, so yes, so the question I've gotten, because some districts, if they're used to using, you know, like um, Rx entries, then they might like be inclined to do it this way. So basically the question that we're going to address is why use one or the other? Now, the very first thing that I wanna point out on this is that when you're using the distributions and error correction, the other page that we looked at, instead of using a receipt, it actually had the total. Like it said, this is how much you changed. If they use a receipt or a reduction of expenditure, the total items equals zero because they're just changing around. So this is very difficult to look back later because especially if the changes are like multiple accounts, it's not very easy to say, here's the total that was changed from these accounts to these accounts the way it would be if they use the distribution error correction. Um, so, and, and the distribution error correction just for uh, like reference, just for classic reference is the, the distribution error correction page that we first looked at is kind of like classics act mod. Um, so let's see. Um, so why, like, I guess that's the thing. So I'm saying, okay, you know, you can see the total amount on the other one. That's the classics act mod. Like, why is this even a question? And so I think this really comes up because as we saw, like you can import receipts. So if there is a case where there's like a large number of adjustments that may be needed, people would be inclined to say, can I just use a receipt for this instead? Because, um, you know, ultimately like, then I can import them. And, and the answer is really that like you could do it either way. It's just going to be a matter of like what works better in the situation. Because obviously the receipt's not as easy to look up, but you have the benefit of importing. So that is helpful. Um, just checking my notes to make sure I hit all the points I want to on this. Um, so let's see. The other part that I just have some, I, I just kind of want to talk about here is that, okay, so let's talk about reduction of expenditure specifically. What we're looking at right here is the Rx, we talked about this, is a reduction of the expenditure. So when we're looking on this, here was our reduction of expenditure because it reduces what we spent, meaning we have more money now. So my uh, reduction of expenditure on the receipt, this first line, it looks positive here, but how it impacts that account is actually negative. Oops. And then when I do the second line where it's a negative reduction of expenditure, now that's like even more of a double, it's like a double, triple negative what we're talking about. So a negative reduction of expenditure shows on here as a positive 10. Essentially, a negative reduction of expenditure is an expense. It's expending. It's spending money if you're talking about a negative reduction um, of the expenditure. So even just talking this out, you know, I'm trying to put a visual with this because I know it sounds super confusing. And really, that's my point in this is if they are looking at these two options and what to use, I completely understand that using negative reduction of expenditures and what those impacts look like can get very confusing, especially if they're trying to do a lot of, you know, if they have something that's more complex. And that's where if they use the distribution error correction, that's making sure that they bring these, that they bring their changes to zero. So it ends up being a wash, which means it would just be a correction between accounts. So so that's the other thing to watch out for. You know, it's not that they can't use these transactions, but especially once they start throwing corrections in here, especially when reduction of expenditure is already more of a kind of complex like transaction, it can get confusing and that and that's just something you got to watch out for. Okay. 
Um, let's see. Okay. And then, yeah, so I mean, I'm just looking over the rest of my notes with this. And really, it's, it, I think the point that gets discussed the most is that um, the two, the, the two things we've covered is that, you know, receipts really, you can import, but the um, distribution error correction, like when those can be used, um, I do think it'll make their lives a lot easier to use those. Um, the other thing I have noted here is being able to use the activity ledger, financial detail reports to locate, um, you know, the specific lines. Um, so like they may have to have more, um, look at the more specific detail of those reports to determine if they're, you know, if they're using a receipt versus being able to look it up right on the um, distribution error correction grid if they can use that. Um, for for like looking back on certain changes. Uh, you know, let's do let's do one more thing real quick here um, before we switch gears and talk about refunds. Is I want to go ahead and you know we've been looking at my little um, balance sheet of like where things go, but let's run a quick. Um, Let's run a quick um, financial detail report because this oops, um, this is going to show us kind of like the two sides that that these charges fall on. Because if you think about it, the financial detail report, it's giving you the column for expended and the column for received. So, when we look at this, um, we can see, look at here are my receipt examples, fees, received amount, received amount. Now here, um, return fees. So this is our uh, reversed, re our receipt revert that we reversed, I believe. Um, no, actually, because that's a different that's a different account. Sorry. Um the one, oh yeah. Where's the breakfast one? Getting ahead of myself. Okay, here's the one that we reversed were these a la carte ones. So these show as a negative received amount because we reversed that receipt. We undid the receipt. So it was negatives to the received amount. Sorry about that. Um, and then if you look here, we have our expended amount column. And so here's like our overpaid. This was our textbook example. So um, what was overpaid? This was our reduction of expenditure, just our regular reduction of expenditure. And that shows on here as a negative 200. So um, just to flip over here, like this is the negative 200 on my expended um, amount. So this is kind of, I was kind of showing the same thing just in a different way on our little balance sheet here. Um, but if you are looking for a way to kind of see that, you know, in transactions that you're looking at, a financial detail is an amazing way to see how this is impacting the expended and received amounts and thus like the overall um, accounts and balance. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and um, move on to the refunds then. And uh, let me switch over here. We are going to transaction refunds. Um, I'm going to switch to this page in the wiki as well. So we're going here. And then we're going to um, transaction and refunds. Okay. So the first thing I want to note is when we are um, on this grid, this is one that I mentioned uh, last Friday when we talked about the release updates, but um, our development team has actually recently made some updates to this refunds page. This was one of the ones that we um, definitely wanted to go back and look at because some of the loading with like creating or um, pulling up one of these to edit, it was taking a bit to actually like open the transaction 
And so we increased the speed where I can click through these um, a whole lot faster now. So um, if that's something that was impacting your districts, that has been recently updated. Um, OK, so so here's the what is a refund and um, refund. Basically, it's the process of returning money previously receded into the system. So, um, you know, I received money for for these fees and I need to return it to the parent that paid it. Like, say they, you know, they paid their fees, but then they they all like their child didn't end up doing that activity. So I need to give them the money back. Um, so in a similar sense to how the reduction of expenditure is, you know, reducing what was spent, a refund is kind of like the parallel to that for um, our receipts. So, you know, if we, we received it in to one of our revenue accounts, I can refund it from one of our revenue accounts. So this is specifically tied to revenue account transactions. Um, let's see. Um, and I just think something that's important to note and like why, you know, so this is specifically with the revenue, um, accounts is this actually circumvents the expenditure, the regular expenditure process. And, um, it allows the original um, received amount to be reduced. So, um, like sort of spent, but not really, you're, you're just like, um, you know, you're kind of, it's more of like an undo than actually like a, I'm spending money. Um, but you are able to cut a check from this process to be able to give that money back, um, essentially. So it is a way to have a check, to have a disbursement for a pro for, um, an amount that doesn't go through the regular expenditure process. And as we look at this, when we end up looking at those disbursements, that's going to become important, um, in some context, in some context. So I kind of want to start off with that. So in order to create a refund, so we're going to go ahead and do create. Again, we can let our refund um, number default refunded to. Uh, so this I can manually type in, but um, for now, I'm going to leave that blank. I'm going to come back to that field. Description. Let's say they overpaid their fees, and then um, I'm going to leave the rest of these blank. Now, I have this check section. So if I want to create a refund with a check, then um, I can check this box. So let's do that. Check date, the default bank, like the bank account. So this is like um, the same kind of idea when they're um, posting their payables and they would select a bank account to associate their disbursements with. Um, and then the vendor. So if I pick a vendor here, um, when I have a check and I select a vendor, this is going to populate the refunded to. So that's why I didn't select it. I didn't actually man manually enter anything for that one because um, this vendor will populate that if you're using a check. If you're not using a check with the refund, then you can go ahead and just um, leave a blank or fill it in yourself. I'm sorry. And then you won't select this part. Okay. And then we have our little item section. And whoops, and let's give back $50. And then you'll notice when we pick an account, so these are all the revenue accounts. So I'm just gonna pick one here. So we are refunding $50 back to Carla. And let me save this. Oh, you also wanna notice uh, the check date does default here, but there is an option to change this when we created this. Um, there was a check date associated. So now let's go to our little balance sheet here. So what I did is I refunded $50. So when I'm looking at this, here's our revenue account. So I am refunding, I'm giving back $50. So I'm lowering. Um, this account and the overall fund balance by $50. I'm saying I did not actually, like I, I may have thought I received that, but I'm actually giving that back. And again, that's how it's gonna look on our financial detail report as well. 
Okay. The other thing um, as far as editing here, so if I go back to edit this, um, I have less that I'm able to edit uh, if I have a check. So if I have created a check, um, then just as far as like modifying certain information, um, I can't go back and do it. I can void the check though um, if I need to like make changes and reissue. So uh, let's see. So let's talk about that. Um, if I go into the refund page here, I believe I have it. Yes, I have it in more information. It's also in the FAQ. So if you need to undo a refund, here it is. If the refund has a check, um, I'm sorry, to reverse a refund that also has a check, I'm on this very last line here. You would go to the disbursement grid and void it. This will reverse the refund, mark the refund as void, and then reverse the transaction to the um, revenue history. So, you know, so it's going to undo the changes that impact the, the fund balance as well. Like it'll do everything you need by just voiding the check associated with the refund. And then to reverse a refund that didn't create a check, um, you would basically need to delete the refund. Um, okay, so let's just go look at what this looks like here. So um, if I go to, so this first one, I made a check with that. So if I if I needed to like print that check, if I needed to see where that is, um, I can come in to my transaction disbursements grid. And here we go, right here. Carla Parker for $50. Here is the disbursement that gets created with this. Um, so it shows as a, as a check. I could um, generate a print file. I can print this check if I need to issue that to Carla. Um, or if this was a mistake, then I can void it from here. Void this check, boom. And um, now that that is void, I'm going to go back to my refunds. And when I look at um, when I look at this, it has this voided checkbox, which I'm not sure if this will, no, it's not going to show. But see, it's kind of grayed out here, so I hope you can see that okay. But um, that voided checkbox is now marked, so this um refund is is reversed it's not going to be impacting the books anymore okay the other question that we get that's related to this kind of same topic with the checks and the um and the refunds and so um, let's create one more time here. We'll kind of go through and make another one of these with the check. So I'm going to make the refund date, today's date, 12-9-2022, refunded to, actually, no, we're not going to fill that in because we're making a check. Let's do it to Trent. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, you know, this check date needs to be in a different month. So I'm going to future date this check oop, to 23. So we're going to put it in January of 2023. Now, I created uh, January 2023 as a posting period. It's out there. It's open. But my district is still in December. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and, and put that future date on the check. And let's give this an amount, like let's do, let's do something we can find easy here. Why not? Let's we'll go for it. Four, five, six, seven. Okay. So we have this really big refund um, and it's a check and we're going to, oh, and my created, my check date changed, hang on. Okay. There we go. So uh, so we are posting the refund in this month, the check in next month. Um, we have our amounts, we're set to go. So the question we get is, 
okay, so the refund and the checks have different dates. So which date is it going to use to hit the accounts, to hit the books? Um, and the answer is that when it's a check that's associated with a refund, it is going to use the refund date. The refund is a unique type of transaction that is essentially um, hitting the revenue accounts the refund can can have a check. It doesn't have to have a check. Like it could be either or. So the date that's going to be used on the financial detail report is going to be the refund date always, whether it has a check or not. So think of it this way, that the check in this case is just kind of the mechanic to get that money back, but the actual transaction and when it's hitting the books is on this refund grid. Um. So let's go to, um, oh wait, so here's our disbursements, um, here's the date, but what I really want to show is the financial detail report. So I'm going to run this for the range of this month and next month, just so that we can review um, the transactions that are actually impact, impacting both months. And uh, let's see here. Here is our big amount right here. We can see it. Um, the very first one, received amount. It's reducing the received amount because we refunded it by the 4,567. If we scroll down here, you'll see I don't have anything that is showing in January, even though I ran this you know, wide open for the dates that are in January as well. Um, which actually it was it was this account, but it's not it's not going to show on here because it's only it only needs to account for it once, but it will be always as of the refund date. Okay, I do have one more scenario I want to talk about. I know we're getting towards the end here, but we won't be going over too much. Um, but the last um, scenario that I have kind of ties both of these together, and so I want to show it. Um, the question, and it's so funny how these things happen because I actually got this question yesterday and I was like, this is perfect because we talk about both our receipts and our refunds. Uh, so let's go, let me go to our little FAQ here real quick. Um, okay, appendix, FAQ. And I'm actually going to go to the disbursement section here. Because um, we have this uh, FAQ, comes up every once in a while. How do I void a check from a prior fiscal year? And this could happen right now if, um, I mean, you know, say there's something like that is being reviewed for the end of the calendar year, but it was something that happened at the beginning of the calendar year, but that was actually last fiscal year. Um, you know, I don't know that this comes up very often where they need to actually like void and then also reissue. But if this happens, how do I void a check from a prior, prior fiscal year? The check cannot be voided from a prior fiscal year. Instead, they would reconcile the check as if it had cleared the bank. And then the money gets receded into the fund in the current fiscal year um, to be used uh, using this receipt code as a refund of prior year's expenditure. And then if you need to reissue that check, you process a refund of the receipt with a check um, from that same account. So um, let's just kind of talk through these steps is, um, so say we have disbursements um, and let's go to, Let's look for something um, that's in the prior fiscal year. So we have this, this check right here. So let's look at this. So this is not in this current fiscal year. Um, say we need to void this. So what we would do, and let's see, we have a couple different, oh, one of these, looks like it's already two. Um, so we have a couple different accounts here. Well, what we would do is it's outstanding. So the first thing we would do is reconcile this check. Then we would go look and say, okay, so this is within fund 003 9922 is the special cost center, right? 
So uh, let's do this. Let's take it. Let's go ahead and reconcile it. So um, just reconcile with a current date. Boom. And what that does is all that piece does is it essentially says it's no longer outstanding. Like I just don't want it to show on my outstanding reports. Um, let's go to our accounts and make sure we have this account. Okay, so it says receipt the money using um, a, a 5300 code. I'm just making sure that we have that, which we don't. So let's create that. Okay, awesome. And then see how this account, so this account code is, specific, is specifically designated for this. So see how this description, and it kind of cuts off here, but um, it says refund of prior year expenditure. So this specific code, it's telling you to use this because um, this specifically will mark it as like, um, I'm getting, so that money, we originally said it was spent in the prior year. Let's do this. So we originally, um, and I forget how much it is, so we're going to make up numbers. So we said that we spent that $600 in the prior year. What we're saying now is we're saying, let's put that $600 back on the books. And so we added it back here. See, we started at 350, we added it back. But now we want to reissue it. Like we don't actually want to keep that amount on our books. So we're going to go make the refund and the refund is going to, oops, is going to spend it back out. And then we'll see that, so these two transactions are essentially going to be a wash. It's not adding anything or um, reducing anything from our current year. And um, it, we were right back to where we started just after the expense that happened at the prior fiscal year. So let's go do that real quick. Okay, so um, receipts. Um, I received from, um, let's see, what does it say? It said, oh, refund of a prior year's expenditure. And I could also put like check number, you know, whatever it was and, um, any other notes that I want to have. Um, related to this process, I have um, the the ability to add them at this point or on the refund as well. Prior year check. Um, we are going to use RC. Um, this is all going through the revenue accounts. And then this is where we look up that account that we had for um, the uh, refund of prior year expenditure. So we're just using an, an example, $600. Pretend our check was for $600. <laughs> um, boom, okay. So that's the first step, okay. And then if they need to reissue it, um, in our test scenario, we are reissuing it, then we would use the refund half of this to come in here and... Um, Reissue prior year check, boom, here, let's create that check. And we would go select the same vendor that, you know, the original check was for. We are going to make this for $600. And then um, again, we're just gonna go find that account that we put the money into. So see that has 600 now, boom, save. And um, then from here, so this is our refund grid, we can go to our disbursements grid. 
And now, um, and I can always like filter this by type two. That makes it a little bit easier. Here's our $600 right here. So I could um, go ahead and generate a print file for this so that I'm able to print a check and now reissue um, to that same amount for the same vendor that was originally a prior year check. So that one kind of ties both of those different um, account types together. Okay. Okay, I hope I didn't speed through that last one too much. I know we're like five minutes over, so I didn't want to um, take up too much of your time either. But that is all I have. Um, I, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, keep an eye on the chat. But um, thank you so much for your time today and joining. Uh, next week, we will be doing um, the ITC uh, management tool. That's at 9 o'clock, uh, 9 a.m. next Friday. So um you know hopefully we will see you there but uh again thank you so much have a great weekend and um thanks all right bye